Hello, I'm Dr Octavia Cox and welcome to my channel where I do all things classic literature. What is a heroic couplet? Today I'm going to answer that question. In answering that question, I'm going to provide a literary definition of what heroic couplets actually are. I'm going to explain why they're called heroic couplets. I'm going to define the difference between closed couplets and open couplets. And I'm going to provide examples of open heroic couplets and closed heroic couplets using Alexander Pope and John Keats. I also want to explain why heroic couplets are particularly associated with the 18th century. Before I forget, if you like what I do here on my channel where I analyse classic literature, then do please subscribe. And if you like the video, then do give it a big thumbs up. It does help me out in YouTube's algorithm. So first, I'm going to provide a definition of heroic couplets. Heroic couplets are a rhymed pair of lines in iambic pentameter. Iambic pentameter is where you have five metrical feet or 10 beats in a line. So that's a rhymed pair of lines in iambic pentameter. It was a particularly common meter in the 18th century. So a fabulous example from Alexander Pope's The Rape of the Lock. This is the 1717 edition where Clarissa gives some unwanted advice to the heroine of the poem Belinda and she says and trust me dear good humour can prevail when airs and flights and screams and scolding fail beauties in vain their pretty eyes may roll charms strike the sight but merit wins the soul even though it has been a very common form across many centuries, the heroic couplet form is often particularly associated with the 18th century, as in the Alexander Pope example that I just mentioned, and today I want to outline why. In fact, the Oxford English Dictionary cites the first use of the term heroic couplets as 1706, and this is when one Joseph Brown declared, perhaps rather boastfully, nor has any nation had so good success in the use of heroic couplets as the English. And that's from Joseph Brown's preface to the Royal Prophetess from 1706. So the term heroic couplets then, we can say, had become well known by the beginning of the 18th century. It had been brought into the general lexicon. I think there are two points to make about why heroic couplets are associated particularly with the 18th century. And to understand why, I think first we've got to think about why they are called heroic couplets. And also we've got to think about what is different about the 18th century use of heroic couplets to those that went before and came afterwards. And this is particularly to do with open couplets and closed couplets, which I'll get onto in a moment. So first, why are they called heroic couplets? What's heroic about them? Well, in the late 17th, early 18th centuries, the neoclassical period, the term heroic was synonymous with epic poetry. The heroic was another name for the epic. So heroic couplets could just as easily have been called epic couplets. And heroic couplets were the form that two really important translations in this period used to translate classical texts. And we remember this is the neoclassical period. Two of the most important translations of classical epic poems used rhymed pairs of lines in iambic pentameter. So the form in this period became associated with epic, or in other words, heroic poetry in the 18th century, hence the name heroic couplets. These two important classical epic translations are John Dryden's translation of Virgil's epic poem The Aeneid from 1697 and Alexander Pope's translations of Homer's epic poems The Iliad from 1715 to 20 and The Odyssey from 1725 to 6. So I'm now going to read the openings of these two epic translations so that you can see the way that Dryden and Pope use heroic couplets in these heroic translations. This is from Dryden's Aeneid. Arms and the man I sing, who, forced by fate and haughty Juno's unrelenting hate, expelled and exiled, left the Trojan shore. Long labours, both by sea and land he bore. 
and Alexander Pope's The Iliad by Homer begins, Achilles' wrath to grease the direful spring of woes unnumbered heavenly goddess, sing. And second, what's different about 18th century heroic couplets to those that came before and after? To answer this, I'm going to define open couplets and closed couplets, and then by extension, open heroic couplets and closed heroic couplets. So first, the closed couplet. The Oxford Dictionary of Literary Terms, edited by Chris Baldick, defines closed couplets as two lines of metrical verse in which the syntax, so that means structure, and sense come to a conclusion or a strong pause at the end of the second line, giving the couplet the quality of a self-contained epigram. Closed couplets are not necessarily rhyming then, but if they do rhyme, the epigrammatic quality is made perhaps more forceful, as in heroic couplets. And open couplets, as perhaps you might expect, are the opposite of closed couplets. In open couplets then, the syntax, so the structure and sense, do not come to a conclusion or pause at the end of the second line, and often the opening of the first line too, actually. The second line in the couplet is not end-stopped, so there isn't a pause at the end of the second line. In other words, there's use of enjambment, so the meaning flows over the line. The sentence continues into the next line without there being a pause to clarify grammar or meaning. Although good poets do often play when they use enjambment with the potential pause or not at the end of a line. So here are a couple of terrible ditties uh, that I wrote that I hope will help you remember the difference between co closed couplets and open couplets. So closed couplet. In order for closed couplets to be fine, the line must end at the end of the line. And open couplets. But open couplets are not so confined. They stretch and flow right over what is lined out in a closed couplet. So we have our definition for heroic couplets and we have our definitions for closed couplets and open couplets. So what happens when we put those all together to make open heroic couplets and closed heroic couplets? For the definition of closed heroic couplets then, you would combine the definitions for closed couplets and heroic couplets. So A, two lines of metrical verse in which the syntax, so the structure and sense, come to a conclusion or a pause at the end of the second line. And B, that the two lines rhyme and are in iambic pentameter. In closed heroic couplets then, the rhyme, the rhythm, the form and the sense all combine to highlight each couplet within a verse paragraph of couplets. So the example that I read out earlier from Alexander Pope's The Rape of the Lock is a good example of 18th century closed heroic couplets. And trust me dear, good humour can prevail when airs and flights and screams and scolding fail. Beauties in vain their pretty eyes may roll, charms strike the sight but merit wins the soul. You can see that these are four lines and they comprise two whole sentences. One sentence for each closed heroic couplet, that is, for each pair of rhymed lines. And furthermore, there is a clause that ends at the end of each line. That's what we call end stopped. So we pause at the end of each line and that pause really highlights the rhyme. And I think this is perhaps why the heroic couplet is most closely associated with the period in which Alexander Pope wrote, the neoclassical 18th century, because he really perfected the closed heroic couplet. And really it's quite an obtrusive form. It makes its presence felt quite strongly. You're conscious of the form as you read it. Because the rhyme and the rhythm and the form and the sense, the meaning, come to a close at the same point, it's quite artificial feeling, perhaps. You're aware that you're coming to a deliberate point where all these things are coming together. You're aware of the kind of technical craft that it takes to bring together, well, to bring together well, good rhyme, good rhythm, good sense, 
and form all together. And that's really what Alexander Pope perfected, is bringing that all very neatly together. But you can't really read closed heroic couplets without being aware that you are reading closed heroic couplets because they make themselves so strongly felt. And I think perhaps that's why we associate heroic couplets, particularly with the 18th century, because Pope perfected the closed heroic couplet. Whereas actually throughout English literary history, the open heroic couplet has been used from the time of Chaucer all the way through. Shakespeare uses it as well into the Romantic period, even though the Romantics are often seen to go against the form that Pope perfected, the, the closed heroic couplet, although the heroic couplet more generally. So I just want to give you an example then of Romantic period open heroic couplets, because I think it will give you a chance to see that there is quite a significant difference actually between open heroic couplets and closed heroic couplets, although we often just use the term heroic couplets without necessarily being specific about which kind of heroic couplet we're referring to. So I want to show that open heroic couplets, you might say, are less obtrusive. They're a bit looser. You're less aware of the form as you're reading the poetry. So this is an example from John Keats's poem Sleep and Poetry, which was published in 1817, so exactly 100 years after The Rape of the Lock that I mentioned earlier. O oh, poesy, for thee I hold my pen, that I am not yet a glorious denizen of thy wide heaven. Should I rather kneel upon some mountain top until I feel a glowing splendour round about me hung? and echo back the voice of thine own tongue? O poesy, for thee I grasp my pen, that I am not yet a glorious denizen of thy wide heaven. Yet, to my ardent prayer, yield from thy sanctuary some clean air, smoothed for intoxication by the breath of flowering bays, that I may die a death of luxury and my young spirit follow the morning sunbeams to the great Apollo like a fresh sacrifice. So even though the examples from Alexander Pope and John Keats that I've described today are both in heroic couplets, you can see that the impression that they give the reader is very, very different indeed. The way that you read Pope's The Rape of the Lock in those epigrammatic couplets it's very different from Keats's poem, which flows over the line, where the meaning goes over the line. And the rhyme perhaps almost feels slightly incidental. It's not, of course, but when you read for meaning, you don't have to necessarily stop at the end of each line. Open heroic couplets don't necessarily pay as much attention to the form of the couplet because the meaning often goes over the rhyme. It goes through the rhyme, it goes beyond the rhyme, it doesn't have to culminate in the same spot as the rhyme. So the meaning runs over in an open heroic couplet in a way that it doesn't in a closed heroic couplet. Thank you very much indeed for listening. I do hope you found these definitions and examples useful in your understanding of heroic couplets so that you'll be able to navigate any heroic couplets you come across in the future more easily. If you found this video helpful, then do please subscribe to my channel where I analyse all sorts of classic literature and do leave any comments that you have below. I really do love hearing from you.